Let's bring in Joe Madden from Sports Grid TV. She had a good weekend. It looked like winning, but hey, Joe, welcome back. Appreciate uh, you always finding time for us. And listen, I was just surfing your Twitter. You always put out the food comments. What's for dinner? Here's what we're having. Yeah. You're clearly a foodie. I want to ask you this. If it's your last supper tomorrow, there ain't going to be a tomorrow. What are you asking? What are you making? What are you wanting served? What's the last supper? That's it. That's an easy one. It is turkey dinner with mashed potatoes and the gravy. I love a big, you know, turkey dinner. Thanksgiving dinner. Cranberries too, obviously. Yeah, Jellied or berries? I make my own. So I kind of strain some. So it's the jelly and do the berries, but I prefer the berries. How about that? All right, cool. Um, here, big old beef steak. Baked potato, okay. Caesar salad, yeah, and garlic toast. That would be my last supper. So just, just putting and that what's out on, there. Now. What's on that baked potato? What's what? What's on your Butter baked potato? Butter and bacon like bits. Loaded? Okay. Butter and bacon bits. That's all. That's all. That's all. Not for the last supper. Um, yeah. So thanks for asking. Now, Joe, there's a lot of things that we can get to, but you mentioned the Art Ross race for the NHL points race. Um, Kucherov's in the lead right now. What has you fascinated about that race now and all season long? Yeah, it's completely fascinating because you look at these players and how much there is for them, the opportunities to break these records. You look at Nikita Kucherov and while he's sitting there with 141 points, he's got 43 goals, but no one's talking about his assists. We know Connor McDavid is coming up on 100 assists, but Nikita Kucherov is two assists behind. And guess what? They both play tonight. Could Nikita Kucherov hit Two points tonight, which puts him even further up on the leaderboard. Connor McDavid's not catching him for the most points, but he could also get both of those by the way of assists. And I do think they come. I think he hits 100 assists before Connor McDavid does tonight. Connor McDavid is playing. It has been confirmed, but Connor McDavid will hit it later in the night. I think we have two players that hit 100 assists tonight. Wow. Okay. You are fascinated about this. Tampa's got the Sabres. And yeah. the Sabres have nothing to play for, and the Sharks haven't had anything to play for since the Bush administration there at Edmonton. So, yeah, point night. Is that what you're thinking? Point night in games against opponents that have no reason, to, that, that, you know, when you're, when you're making these predictions? Yeah, absolutely. Like the Tampa Bay Lightning, there's no way that I can take them straight up to get the win tonight. While they should get the win over the Buffalo Sabres, I just look, you circle Nikita Kucherov here to come out nice and strong to be able to get those two plus points on the board. Now, if you look at him for the two plus assists, that's coming in at plus 235. The two plus points, the books have caught on to. You're not getting the value at plus 114. I do think he'll get the two assists tonight because you look at his ability to get those assists and he was held off the board in the last game out versus Washington. He wasn't able to record any points at all, but his last couple of games, two versus the Sens, three versus the Columbus uh, Blue Jackets, three versus the Penguins, and two versus Montreal. So those assists are coming night in and night out, and I do think he gets there. Braden Point should be able to get the goal off Nikita Kucherov. That's what I'm hoping tonight. Is there, maybe you don't know, but is there more money spent more impressions even on these prop bet predictions or team bets at all? Is there a split on that? Have you ever looked into that? I've never looked into it, but if I'd have to guess, I think more people are still betting the sides. Lots of people still looking to bet money lines on favorites, and you're looking at that as, and I can't get there. So I dive into those prop bets looking for plus money. It's just the way that I like to bet. But I do think a lot of people will come <clears> in and look at Tampa tonight as the favorite and just lay the minus 170, minus 175 where they're sitting, which is kind of hard here versus the Buffalo Sabres team who, while they're taking those penalties, this team, has won to the last three meetings over the Tampa Bay Lightning. So I can't get there with the Lightning even for the straight up win tonight. I saw the Sabres play here Saturday night in sunrise and I'm like, these guys are working hard. Why are they, why is their record so bad? They're a talented team. You just said it, penalties, undisciplined. I honestly hope they grow out of that for the players' sake. Here's a, a complicated question for me that I don't think will be that complicated for you because you're in the betting game. 
I see tra uh, DraftKings has Carolina as the Stanley Cup favorite. Last I saw, I assume they still are. You were, I saw your clip talking about the uh, Hurricanes in Blackhawks yesterday. I don't see a world that the Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup. I don't. What goes into these outrights to make predictions like that? Do you know or do you not know? I, I don't know exactly how the books come up with it. I guess they look at their path and how they've done um, against the opponents they think they will face. So the Carolina Hurricanes right now should face the Islanders because the Islanders should finish third in the Metro. So I do think yep. that is a clear win over the Islanders. And then they'd face the Rangers right now or the Lightning as long as the Rangers finish first in the Metro. I really struggle to see the Canes making it through the second round. While I do love their team and strong defensively, and we know goaltending has picked up with Forsberg coming back, I just still question if they're able to make that push in the second round of the playoffs here. So I think there's other value there. You look at the Florida Panthers, and I do think the Florida Panthers are such a phenomenally strong team. They're plus 750. I'm not looking at Colorado because I actually think Colorado has the opportunity of being upset by the Winnipeg Jets in that first round. I love what we've seen out of Winnipeg. And Winnipeg has the goaltending advantage out there. You look at the duel there with Connor Hellebuck and Boussois, and I can't get behind Colorado because of that. I can't get behind Edmonton because of their goaltending. So Dallas at plus 800 is interesting. Florida at plus 750. I just think there's more value than the Carolina Hurricanes at plus 650. I just don't see them making it. I don't either. That's why I was shocked to see them, number one. So on your board that you follow, you got Dallas as the Stanley Cup favorite right now? Um, no, Dallas is plus 800. In my opinion, I think Dallas can come out and get it done. I like what we've seen out of Jake Ottinger. This team has turned it up another level um, as of now. So the Hurricanes are still listed on what I look at as the favorite at plus 650. So it's going to oh, be. Okay. So we, yeah. You're looking at the same thing I am. Just neither, uh, neither of us agrees with it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine how you go about your prep. We only got a couple minutes left here. Um, but I just wondered your thoughts on how March Madness played out. If it was anything like you predicted. Or are you, are you even thinking about it anymore? Because you're always looking forward. Because I see you're into baseball. We've got the NFL draft coming up. But how did you feel about the way March Madness played out on both the men's and women's sides? It feels like 500 years ago, honestly, Rod, but it was fantastic. The woman's was amazing. It was great to see what Caitlin Clark has been able to do. And while she wasn't able to record the win, just phenomenal. I'm already excited to see her go into the WNBA. And there's already betting lines out on her for her three-pointers and everything like that. So super exciting to see women's basketball really highlighted with her in the league. Hopefully next season, as many people tune in, I actually think it was more exciting than the men's. And then looking at the men's, hats off to UConn. You know, all of my brackets seem to be busted. I did have UConn to be able to get the win. But the upsets over March Madness were crazy. But that's what we watch it for. I still can't believe Houston went out as early as they did. I expected them to be in the finals there with UConn. But UConn to be able to just dominate all of... Um, all of March Madness, covering the spread each and every single game. So it was fantastic to see. It, it was dominant. And by the way, I hesitated to ask you that because I just know you're looking ahead or at the very least. It was one week ago tonight. I knew you could handle the question, but it was only a week, only ago. A week ago. It does feel like <laughs> it feels like a year wow. ago. It was one week ago tonight, 75-60. Yeah. They won over Purdue. Yeah. All right, Joe, you're the busiest person I know in this business. We'll let you go do your thing. Do you want to throw in a plug for Sports Grid TV for our audience right now? Yeah, if you guys are looking to check out Sports Grid TV, head over to www.sportsgrid.com slash watch, and you'll find all the places you're able to check it out. And, Rod, I wanted to tell all of your viewers that are in Oakland, go watch your Oakland A's. The Nationals and the A's played this weekend. One of the lowest attendance ever, 3,330 fans only in the seats on Saturday. You know the local Okotoks Dogs team gets more people each and every game, 4,000. It was just pitiful to see that, So. Oakland, go with That's support reminiscent of the r reminiscent of the final days of the Montreal Expos. That's what that sounds like to me. Joe, thanks for this. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Have a good one, Rob.
Joe, you too, Joe Madden of Sports Grid TV. Go give her a follow at Joe Madden Sport. That's J-O, no E, Madden Sport.